morning. It is the first Sunday in Lent, and we continue along our journey from ashes to Easter. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. We say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Let us remember the things we have done, the words we have spoken, the thoughts we have had, which got in the way of the good you would have us do and the love you would have us live out in our day-to-day -day encounters. And so together we say, O oh God, you made a covenant with us in faithfulness, but we confess we are not always so faithful to you. We can grow tired and restless when things don't go our way. We can lose patience with others we can lack compassion for our neighbors in need and even forget to express our love to those closest to us. Forgive us, gracious God. Lead us in the way we should go. Make us prisms of your love. Make us rainbows of your light, creating beauty and deepening hope wherever we go. For the sake of Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the collect for the first Sunday in Lent. God of the wilderness, your son battled with powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these 40 days to grow in wisdom and prayer so that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by, by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me 
and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways. And the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the wa water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Every year on the first Sunday in Lent, the lectionary gives us one of the three readings of Jesus in the wilderness. This year, uh, our reading is part of the Markan cycle, and one of the things that we see time in and time out in the Gospel of Mark is that Mark is not a detailed person. Mark is about brevity. He just gets to the point. And, and for preachers today, the greatest temptation is to draw in Matthew or Luke, uh, gospel narratives about the temptation, which are filled with Jesus and the tempter engaging in witty repartee. And, and Jesus comes out on top because Jesus is Jesus. And then when it's finished, he goes on his way to get on with the work of being Messiah. There are so many images, so many directions that you can run with, with that story, either from Matthew or Luke, from Mark, not so much, not so much. And so I think it's important on this day, in this part of the liturgical cycle, for us to look at the reading from Mark in tandem with the reading from the Hebrew scriptures, the narrative of Noah and, and the ark. Let's start with Noah. Uh, the story, as, as you well know, is about the fact that, that humanity was caught up in corruption. They were perverse, there was evil, there was violence, and, and they had pushed Yahweh, God, to the limit of, of his patience. And so in the part of, of the narrative before what we heard today, we hear Yahweh making statements. I will blot out. I will destroy. I will bring a flood. Things were not looking good for the human race. Let's be really clear about this. Uh, but in the midst of this, in the midst of this, 
Noah arrives on the scene and Noah was one who was above the perversity and corruption of humanity. Noah was a person of faith. Noah was a person who understood what it meant to be a child of God, one of God's creatures. And so, in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of the destruction, God remembers Noah and has a change of heart, a change of mind. And Yahweh, God, makes an irreversible promise, an irreversible commitment to a new humanity. I will remember my covenant. And the rainbow is the symbol of the fact that Yahweh would always remember the covenant with Yahweh's people. Now let's be clear, chaos still existed, evil and, and violence and destruction still existed. The difference, however, was the promise that no matter what, they would never be cut off. They would never be alone. God, Yahweh, would be with them, no matter what. Okay, we, we, we move to our gospel reading today. And we know that the gospel of Mark is a gospel of conflict, that from the very beginning that Jesus would be in conflict with the powers of Rome, the powers of the empire. He would be in conflict with the Jewish religious elite, and he would be in conflict with the cosmic forces of evil, the unholy trinity. Okay. In our reading today, Jesus is baptized in the wilderness by John. He is infused with, he is possessed by the Spirit of God, the Ruach, the Holy Breath of God. And, and that same Spirit drives him deeper into the wilderness for an encounter. And in this encounter, Jesus is tested by, and in Mark's gospel, tested is a much better translation than tempted. He is tested by the forces of evil. And, and we see in the story that, that he is confronted by wild beasts. I think it's interesting that in the book of Daniel and later in the book of Revelation, wild beasts are metaphors for the political and religious powers that menace humanity. We have a story here about Jesus in the wilderness confronting the unholy trinity, confronting those forces of evil which menace humanity. But he's not alone. He's not alone. The story tells us that he is cared for ministered to by angels, by messengers from God, who made sure that he would not be overwhelmed by the testing. And when it's over, when the testing is over, let's be clear, evil, it, it had not been done away with. Evil still existed. Wilderness still existed. Jesus would be tested by evil for the rest of his ministry. Evil would put him on the cross, but evil would not have the last word. God would have the last word. So what is our takeaway from this story as we start our Lenten journey? I think we need to understand when we put the story of Noah the story of Jesus in the wilderness together. We need to understand that chaos, that wilderness, they are not simply things that appeared in stories 2,000 years ago. They still exist. They are part of human existence. They are part of our existence. And there is no shortage of situations, of events, of experiences 
that take us there. And when we find ourselves in wilderness moments, we can feel cut off. We can feel alone. We can feel like the rest of the world is happy and we are the only ones that are hurting. Wilderness can be crushing. It can be terrifying, mind numbing, heartbreaking. It absolutely can. But here's the thing. We are not alone. Remember God's promise. I will remember my covenant with my people. Even at those times, at those moments when it is hard to feel, hard to believe, God is present. We're not alone. But, but there's more. Yesterday, I received an amazing, an amazing message from my daughter-in-law. And it had a picture of my grandson, Lion, who's six years old. And Lion had the stomach flu and he was kneeling in front of the toilet doing what six-year-olds do when they have the stomach flu. Um, and as he was there, feeling like his world was coming to an end, his two-year-old sister, Liberty, stood beside him with her hand on his back, looking at him with a look of love and concern. And when I looked at, at that picture, it occurred to me that Liberty was Lion's angel. In that wretched and wretching moment, she was there so that he would know he was not alone. This two-year-old made sure that her big brother knew that he was loved and that he would not be overwhelmed. As, as we go through our Lenten journey, and I suggested on Ash Wednesday that, that Lent is a journey from ashes to Easter, it's a journey from brokenness to wellness, from brokenness to shalom. If that is true, and I believe it is, I think we would do well, you and I, to think about those moments when we have been in the wilderness. And listen, we have all been there and some of us are still there. Think of those wilderness moments in your life and think about who the angels were. Who were the people who were there to put their hands on your back to let you know that you were precious, that you were loved, that you were not alone. Who were the persons who were there so that you would not be overwhelmed by the wilderness that surrounded you? Think of those people. Think of what that felt like and the strength that you were given and thank God for them. And one more thing. Take the time to look around you. Members of your family, friends, members of your community, members of the parish who might be having their own wilderness experience right now. And God knows most of the world is. What would it take for you to be their angel. What would it take for you to be the one with your hand on their back, helping them to know that they are loved? A phone call, a FaceTime, a Zoom, or maybe physical contact. As we journey from ashes to Easter, from brokenness to wholeness. We pray that we will know that we are not alone. We pray for God's angels in our lives to give us strength and hope and courage to carry on. And we pray 
for the wisdom, for the courage, and for the openness to be angels to those who so desperately, desperately need us. Let all God's children say amen.
Now we respond to the proclamation of God's word as together we say the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. As we enter into this holy season, Lord God, we give you thanks for your promise of new life that sustains us, especially as these months of pandemic stretch on. We thank you for tiny signs of hope, even in a bleak landscape or on a challenging day, for glimpses of beauty in a smile or a ray of sunshine, for scientific achievements that ease suffering in this time of pandemic, for the people who support and serve others in times of weakness or loss, for the chance to recover from mistakes, to begin again. Lord of life, sustain us with your presence and give us patience and perseverance as we await the future with you. Trusting your promise of new life, it is with hope that we pray. For anyone we have hurt by harsh words or careless deeds. For those known to us who are carrying heavy burdens. For all who are seeking employment or worry about their businesses. For teachers, students, and school administrators managing so many challenges this year. For troubled places in our world and those who work for reconciliation and understanding. For our congregation and all churches seeking new ways to minister in these months of distancing from each other. For Aiden, appointed to be our new incumbent, and for Sarah, William, and Bennett, as they prepare to leave their parish family in Sudbury to come and be in our midst, that this challenging time of transition might be the beginning of a new and exciting chapter in their lives, and for the people of the parish they are leaving behind, for strength and vision as they move into the future God intends for them, we pray. for ourselves and those lives closely connected to ours. Renew our health and hope for the future you will bring us through the courage and compassion of Christ our Lord as we pray together the words he taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go now and live in the spirit of your baptism, even when you find yourself in difficult, challenging places, even when you are tempted to take the easy way out. May God enfold you in tender and lasting love. May Christ be beside you in times of struggle. May the spirit guide you back in the path whenever you stray off course and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.